All right, welcome back to Rolling History. Um, what's been going on with Carr? It's been a long time. So I have just about everything back to put the motor together. We're going to work on the engine today, uh, mostly on the valve train um, and a little bit on the crank. But uh, I've had everything out and machined. It's got a fresh bore, um, a grind on the crank, um, both parts of the crank, the mains and the rod journals, um, new babbit on the rods and the crank, um, new valve guides, new valves, springs, um, new pins for the keepers, um, just about everything. It's got a fresh, um, I had them surface the head, so just about everything that can be done to that engine, we did. Um, so we're going to start putting it together today, um, and uh, we'll probably take uh, the engine in two or maybe three episodes. Uh, I have to still get a gasket kit for it. Um, I'm going to order that tomorrow. So then we can put the whole thing back together, seal it up, put the transmission on it, and have it ready to go back in the car. But that's going to take us a couple weeks, um, maybe a couple more videos. So anyways, let's get started on, uh, on putting that valve train together. All right, so here's the engine block. I've got it back. Um, it's had a ton of work done to it. Um, it's got a fresh bore on all the cylinders. Um, it's got a valve job. And as you can see, I was just uh, lapping the valves right there. You can see the compound still on there. Um, I had to have new Babbitt put in uh, for the rods and the mains. That took a while, so I'm finally back to the point where I can work on the engine. I'm going to check the clearance on the main bearings just to make sure I've got some plastic gauge. I want to just check it. I know they told me it's good to go, but uh, you know, I want to know for sure. And then um, maybe we'll bolt up the crank and the rods get the pistons put in if I have time for that today I'm not quite sure so let's uh, let's see how far we can get all right so here's the new Babbitt um, I had Babbitt poured and machined uh, down in Escondido at uh, antique engine bearing service so they say that it's all set up, ready to go, but I'm just going to check it with the plastic gauge to make sure um, before I go any further. And so let me get the plastic gauge on there. We'll get the crank in and we'll, uh, we'll just check it and see where we're at. Okay, now if you don't know what plastic gauge is, this right here is plastic gauge. It's like a little, almost like a, like a string but it's, it's uh, a little piece of plastic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it and we're gonna lay it in here. On the bearing surface, just like that. And then I'm gonna come back with the cap. I'm gonna put the cap on. I'm gonna do that to all three of the main bearing surfaces. So this stuff is really squishy, I guess is what you would call it. It's really soft. And what's gonna happen is when I crank this down to the spec, it's gonna spread it out. And this is how you measure it. If it squishes down and it's as wide, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go by the inches. If it's as wide as that green stripe right there, it's one thousandths clearance. If it's as wide as the white, it's one and a half thousandths, all the way down to three thousandths clearance. So that's how I'm gonna measure once it's all smashed in there. Um, 
that's how I'm gonna know how much clearance I have in there. So let me get all this tightened back down here. I'm not just gonna go for it, I'm gonna kind of sneak up on the on the uh, torque spec. I'll have to look it up, but I'm gonna go to 20 pounds right off the bat and see where, and then I'll go check it. Okay, so the front is between one and three thousandths, which is okay. The center is pretty tight there, or loose, between three, and it's around three thousandths. And in the back here, we're at about three thousandths, which is within the tolerance. So I think that's good. Now that I got all the clearances and I'm happy with what I've got on the crank here, I'm gonna install the camshaft. And um, there's really not much to putting the camshaft in. Basically just get a lot of uh, assembly lube on it and try not to knock it around too much while you're putting it in. So that's what I'm gonna do next. First of all, I'm gonna put some assembly lube all over as much as I can. Before I put them into where it stays, I'm going to add a little more assembly lube. All right. This is a little piece that uh, holds the camshaft from moving back and forth. It goes right here in this hole. And uh, if you notice, there was two ring or bearing surfaces on the camshaft with a slot in the middle. And this piece here has to fit in that slot. If you have it turned sideways, it'll never go in. You'll never get it in. And you probably damage the camshaft. So it has to go in vertically like this. And got to line it up. And I'm hoping I can just tap it in wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, I put it in dry the first time and uh, it didn't want to line up very well. It must have been cocked just a little bit so it wouldn't go. Um, so I pulled it back out and I put some lube all over it even uh, on the press fit side of it. Um, I considered putting some Loctite in there but I think it's the water pump or the distributor drive uh, mount that goes there and that holds it in anyway so I'm not going to uh, I'm not so worried about having some Loctite on there but anyways the cam is spinning nice and free now um, and I'm just gonna, just gonna consider that uh, finished so I'm gonna turn the motor over we'll put the valves in okay so for the valves uh, each one's gonna get a little bit of assembly lube on them um, this has all new valve guides and valves, so um, just want to make sure they're nice and smooth, which this one is excellent. Um, then you have the spring, you have the keeper, and then there's a pin. This little pin goes through the hole. Let's see goes through the hole here in the uh, valve and it kind of sits down in here so it can't come out. Um, to me it seems like 
there's a little taper in that hole or there's just a little burr left on that end because each valve seems to not go all the way through. So I'm gonna set it. Hopefully I can keep it to where I just have to kind of punch it through a little bit when it's all done. Okay, on the valve spring, I had to take out the valve, push the spring up into where it seats up here, and then compress the spring enough to get it over the lifter. And it's just kind of hanging there right now. There's no keeper or there's no pin. There's no valve to put this, the uh, little pin in. So I'm gonna get out my um, valve spring compressor compress the valve spring, put the valve, or put the valve in, put this compressor on, compress the spring, and then put the pin in. But um, I won't be able to show you that because my camera stand doesn't go this low, and I can't hold it and do it at the same time, so I'll just have to come back to you on that. So hang on. I thought I'd try and show this. I've got the valve spring compressor on, and you can see how it's holding the valve spring up. and. Yeah, you can see the hole right up there. I have to get this pin in there. I can't even see the pin. Well, I've got to get that pin in there, and then when I let the spring compressor off, it'll hold it. Um, it'll hold the keeper and keep the valve in. So let me give it a shot. I'll uh, come back when I'm all done. All right, so here it is. I've got the valve, at least the last one in or number eight. So this is actually the first one I've put in. But anyways, um, I'm gonna do that to the rest of them and then we'll move on. It's really kind of tight space down there so I'm not gonna be able to video it, but uh, that gives you the gist of what's going on. I'm gonna just gonna repeat that to the other seven valve. Here we go, I've got all the valves in, all the keepers, all the pins, um, all the lifters, the camshaft, um, I had to take off the uh, engine stand and I had to put it on my cherry picker to get it, get the last two or three valves in there. Um, it wasn't hard, uh, it just took a little time. I had to run back and forth to my toolbox a few times. But um, it's there, it's together. Now I gotta get it back on the engine stand so I can uh, figure out what my next step is. But anyways, uh, that's probably gonna be it for today and uh, we'll get back to this on my next video. So there you have it. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Rolling History. Um, the next episode we'll work on uh, putting the pistons in, do some rods, put the rods in, um, and uh, hopefully get the engine put together in the next episode. And then the following episode we'll put all the um, attachments to it the water pump the distributor the you know all the pulleys uh, the, all the uh, generator starter combination and uh, and then we'll have a complete engine so um, thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you soon